Okay, do you not mind hugely if I have a blanket on during this video because it's like freezing in this house? Freezing to the point literally where I have a hot water bottle on my legs right now. See? It's freezing! It's like three degrees outside, so I have my fleece blanket and we're gonna do this like we're very ill, but we're not, we're just blooming cold. I did, however, dry my hair for you this time. Hey, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Hello, creepy friends. Welcome to Slams and Bobs. It's that time of the week again where that Thunderbirds girl comes out of me. I think I'm going to rename this show that Thunderbirds girl. Does anybody like that? Because I, I think that's a little bit better than just me saying I'm going to review the episodes. I'm trying to think of sort of more eye-catching ideas for the channel. I've got one or two things in mind, but next week, and I'm going to mention it now, everyone will be in the house. Uh, people are here on holidays from work, which means we're not going to have the time necessarily to do things. As I said, there is a huge chance we're not going to get to review this week's episode. I'm hoping that's not the case. I'm hoping I'll be able to do it quickly on Saturday morning before, ev before everybody comes home. But what we are going to do next week, which I'm going to pre-record all of this week, I'm going to do something called the five days of tin time. And I'm going to do a tin time vlog every day. And I've kind of got an idea what I'm going to do about this. I'm going to sort of document the struggles and the fears of a new YouTuber. Because there's a lot recently that's happened and there's a lot of stuff really. I suppose I've had in my mind for the last year. I mean, I have been at this for a year now. And it's just become apparent that I should kind of maybe talk about that. Because I think that would be quite fun. Because I don't think a lot of people realise what it's like to be that YouTuber who's just looking going, Why don't I have six million viewers yet? So this week's episode of Thunderbirds Argo was called Heist Society. And it was based around... A lot of them, actually, for once. Mainly Gordon. Mainly Gordon. Gordon was the main one here because it was kind of an underwater mission. Mission? Mission? I sometimes struggle with ch sounds. No, wash. Like, I have to really work hard to say the word wash. Otherwise I go wash. See what I mean? A wash. I don't pronounce sh properly. If I say it quickly, I, I sound silly. I love the fact as well that on my notes I have the phrase Parker and Lenny rather than Parker and Penny. So this kind of continues on from the mid-season finale, if you remember it, back in about June, July. And Penny and Parker are escorting Professor Moffat, the lady that Brains has a crush on, to Switzerland again, back to Reykjavik, where funnily enough my brother's just come back from. She has found this particle centurion thing that came about from what happened that day. But of course, the hood wants it. There's been several attempts for him to try and get it. They've all been decoys. So you know, the minute that the Thunderbirds are involved and Penny's escorting and all this stuff's going on, he's gonna attack the underwater train. So what happens? We see him in a little bumble submarine stalking the underwater train. And after the intro, bang, he attacks the train. Like we didn't know that was gonna happen. With all the heavy kind of activity going on, Parker hits his head, gets knocked out. And in the meantime, Moffat decides she's going to go and talk to the driver, which is stupid because the minute this happens, the hood gets aboard and takes her identity with a little hologram thing. He always used to be a master of disguise in the original. They're just updating it. She disappears. I thought that it was going to be a traditional kind of hood kidnapping where he would like tie him up and throw him in a cupboard. And, but no, he, she just kind of knocked her out. With the Thunderbirds watching, they also find out that the signal has been jammed, therefore they can't contact Penny. So they all launch. Virgil takes Gordon in Thunderbird 2. Scott launched and I, I wasn't actually sure why Scott had launched at the time. I had no idea. Alan disappeared. I suppose he went back to bed. Thankfully, the ones he wasn't in this episode. And Brains wanted to go because he loves Professor Moffat. He loves her. But Scott told him no. So he had to stay there. There was actually no hint of Gordon and Penny in this episode either. Apart from the fact that he kind of went all out to save her. So in between the Hood confronting Moffat and the Thunderbirds arriving at the scene and Gordon going underwater, they finally manage to get Chip in and get to Penny and contact her via a little combat thingy. And just at that moment, Penny's dog starts acting strangely because obviously we know it's now the Hood sitting opposite, on her, opposite her on this train. She kind of has an inkling because the dog loved Moffat. The dog hates the Hood. So when Gordon says that, she just sits there and goes, Oh, hell! 
You're the hood! Ah! The hood gets away, throws the real Professor Moffat out as she does as he does, because she's roused back awake again and she kind of comes back going, Oh, I must have hit my head. Yeah, either that or that nasty guy just beat the hell out of you, love. Penny and Parker take off in pursuit. Unfortunately, they're not quite quick enough. However, what Penelope manages to do is throw a tracking device onto the hood, but not before he floods the whole tunnel of train, therefore putting just about everyone on board in danger. Taking, as well, the Centurion with him. I forgot the most valid point since it's in the train and they're there. The minute that she knows it's him, he grabs the case and that's why she pursues him, not just because it's the hood, but she wants to pursue him for that reason as well. Not for the same reason she's pursuing Gordon. This is where the fun happens with Fab One. Now we have seen it in the kind of pants human movie Fly. And I was absolutely fine with that. It was kind of questionable. I was quite happy with it. In this one, it was on board the train and it became a submarine. I love that. I know it's going to be questionable for some fans, but I really kind of like that. I thought it was cool. And then they go after the hood who's taken off in his own craft that the Thunderbirds find when they arrive on the scene. So now that Penelope and Parker are after the hood, it leaves Gordon to work with Moffat and the driver to save every passenger aboard, which they do quite successfully using a lot of balloons, cool little submarine balloons that Brains had suggested using because he knew that Thunderbird 4 wasn't going to be able to do it on its own. And then he sends that part of the train with all passengers up to Virgil, who takes them all back to dry land. And then Gordon goes after Penelope, going after the hood. So just as Penelope catches up, he starts attacking her and throwing like a bomb type of thing at them. And that's when Gordon comes along and they both work with Thunderbird 1, which now has a purpose in this mission. They put a line, they're going to grab the hood out. But unfortunately, he kind of doesn't go for that. He shoots himself out leaves the Centurion behind and escapes. But they have the Centurion back. Yay! And all's well that ends well. First point I'm going to make, at the end of the episode, Professor Moffat was in the Thunderbirds base. Now what happened to all the secrecy and the hidden base? Why is she there? I don't get that. I really don't. I get that she obviously knows who the Thunderbirds are and that Penelope is working with the Thunderbirds. Again, I'm not going with that but I don't kind of think she should be at the base. Because if the hood were to grab her again, she might be able to tell them where the base is. Think it through. I still can't stand Penny's dog. I'm not going with it. I know it's a cute, tiny little pug and it's adorable, even for a little CG, I think, but I didn't, I don't like the dog, I'm sorry. It, may, it makes her look cliched, like some kind of celebrity, and I don't like that. I am sure I saw the hood's eyes change to that snake-like yellow when they did a dark scene before he got on the train. How many people got excited? I thought the powers were coming back. It didn't happen. Oh my God, they went yellow. And I was just like, ah, yay. You all know how much I'm missing the hood's powers. So that for me, and I think for a few other fans was way so fun. And I have to say, when they did the scenes of the train stuck in the underwater tunnel and they did the flooding with it, you could totally tell that was set and not CGI and I got, so excited. I'm pretty sure as well they had set mixed with CGI at one point when Penelope was legging it back to get back in the hatch before she got drowned. And I, I love that. I love getting to see those moments because sometimes you can't always tell. And I said before, I think that's a testament to the CGI. I, I just love seeing that. Like just getting to see that set. It always reminds me of Stingray and different underwater sets where they had every time where they always had little like neon tetra fish just like swimming along because you knew they put a fish tank in front of it that's probably the talk talk hackers because we're getting calls from the same kind of 0012 number every day and that is apparently their fake numbers and they're trying to get details off you if you're with talk talk you know they got hacked so be careful about that guys and that was the episode called Heist Society. It was relatively good. I guess if I'm grading it, I would put it at a B. It certainly didn't compare to the A grade one of the season finale where everybody was involved. It was nice to see all five brothers in this episode. We had John. I need an episode of John. I think I'm craving an episode of John again. So if you remember from last week's Thunderbirds video, I talked about being able to pre-order via Kickstarter the 1965 editions. Now, unfortunately, I wasn't able to do that. As a YouTuber, you have to remain respectful of a lot of things. So I was trying to find out things about the 1965 and no one was responding. So when I kind of bit a little bit, 
I got told off by. I don't like being ignored at the best of times. It's a page connected to Thunderbirds and it's so close to my heart. I don't want to say too much. I don't want to end up with a bad rep and being someone who's seen as bitchy or nasty because that is just not in my nature. So I made my apology. I don't think it was accepted and I really can't do anything more than that. If you would like to subscribe, please do. If you would like to follow Instagram or Twitter, please do. We had a whole WWE thing going on last night on Twitter and I actually managed to keep to it. I thought I was going to do one comment and then die in front of the TV. That didn't happen for once in my life. I'm quite happy. I am actually really looking forward to doing the five days of tin time with you guys next week. I think that's going to be a fun little thing to do. I've got a lot of points to make. I've kind of got four already. They're going to be short quick tin times are not going to be like some of my ones which have been 10 to 15 minutes i'm going to try and keep them about the five minute mark each and i will see everybody hopefully on saturday but if we can't do it i'm really sorry i did say to you i might not be able to do it so I'm keeping my fingers crossed that we can i will see everyone again bye